Yes, it was crazy. It was really crazy. It was really, 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 really crazy for, Philmon Rezine, who was called, Blood, by his friends, to fly to Chicago, in order to chase Cloud. Blood, rap struggle verses and rap songs, while, using the name, Lil Trub. He paid money for a feature from, the president, of the Union of Transmission Workers, better known as, the Clout Lord himself, Lil J. The Clout Lord blessed, Blood, with an appearance in his video, to the remix of Chief Keef's song, Phone O, but, at the end of the day, chasing clout cost, Blood, his life. Today, we detail all of the crazy events on May 4, 2015, that led to Blood's murder, from the fight in the morning, between former friends, King Lil J, and King Yella, too, the artist formerly known as, FBG Butta, cooperating with the police, late, that night. This, is the Cartoon News Network's feature presentation, Ford vs Ferrari, Lil J's Union of Transmission Workers. Strike. I asked Lil J about this, in our second interview, and he said, well, my friends know to keep their women around from around me because they know if they choose up, I'm going to do what I do. Because he'll f anything. That's why you got conversations about him f men. He, he has a... Let me tell you about Lil J. Lil J, bro, his sex drive is up here. But I know how he, I know how he was on the street. I know how he was off drugs. Come on, man. That nigga done got off pills and then tried to kiss a nigga before. Like, come on now. If King Yella is telling the truth, then... He must secretly want to join Lil J's union of transmission workers. Why else would King Yella continue to hang around Lil J, after he tried to kiss him, while high on pills? What was he waiting for? Did he want Lil J to check under the hood of his car to get his spark plugs working right? Did he want him to polish the chrome, on the rims of his car's rear tires? Or, did he want, Lil J, to open the passenger's side door and clutch his stick shift, to get him in gear? Who knows, but, the two of them fell out, after Lil J started having sex with King Yella's girl, Dorothy Young, who raps struggle lyrics under the name, Queen D. Man, he sneak this over that bitch, man, we done fucked so many hoes together, man, I took her, man. Sneak this over this bitch, I asked him, man, the bitch on me, she in my inbox, what's to it, man, go ahead and fuck her. I ball the bitch out, she don't wanna fuck with him no more. I don't know why. <laughs> Then you want to get mad at me. And the crazy thing is, I wasn't even mad that he made the interview, but I saw him the same day that I fucked shorty. I come I come to the door with Glizzy in my hand, my boxer briefs. You know, no, I'm trying to get my clothes. <laughs> I'm like, shit, go ahead. I'm bro. Buddy got his chains on. Buddy got his chains on. He's like, man, let me get my chains, man. Let's take time to give it to me. I'm like, Man, get it from Shorty. Like, you ain't getting shit. You know, like, that's how you gonna do me. I was actually, I was actually pregnant with um, young baby. You know what I'm saying? When I was locked up or whatever. Lil J and them, Lil J, my ex, uh, Queen, uh, blah, 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 blah. Back in the day. Lil J he backed back door me and one of my hoes and that same day he caught that case and was going to jail for a long time. But think again, it's just certain lines you don't cross, bro. Don't, we don't play with homes and, you know, the average nigga, we all got, 25,000 different bitches anyway. Why are you supposed to be my brother? You tell me you love me, you my homie. Why is you playing with my home? That right there gonna get you and that bitch killed. That, I'm being honest with you. Because it's like, you around me faking, and then people don't understand. Oh, that, it ain't about the bitches. Loyalty of royalty. You around me, slide, smiling in my face, and you sliding me out. This ass bitch in your bitch ass. You know what I'm saying? But then we, a hundred hoes together, all type of shit. You wanna what I'm at home? I'm a real nigga, bro. There's no way possible that I'm trying to. Oh fuck! I'm like your side bitch. Cause you my side bitch too. But on skis, you play my home. I'm putting that belt to your ass. I'm put more than that belt to your ass. I'm put that switch to your ass. You know that switch, grandma? Make you get off the back of the tree. Yeah, that's how I'm gonna feel. <laughs> For real, like, come on, we real niggas, gang. Why is you, I got kids, you from my home, I been building this, you know what I'm saying? I'm building, I'm not just, you know what I'm saying? This is different when you building with a ball. You think you just gonna come take the bricks out my house like that and it's just gonna fall? Bitch, everybody about to fall, on skis, that's how it's gotta go. Other than that, I'm gonna leave me alone, bro. I'm from Chicago, your ass gonna die.
He had a tame beef, a Pepsi, and a pack of squares right there. As soon as I saw that, oh yeah, that bitch told. Look, so look what had happened. We went to the club. What had happened? Right? <laughs> right, so look, we went to the club the night before, right? Okay. So I had two. I had the BDK chain. Said two four K rose gold, nice little Dorothy drug. She ended up snapping the link on my. Sh All right, so when we get to Dorothy crib, it's changed on her TV. Okay, and I didn't even know that was right there. I grabbed him. Hold on, she just broke my chain. Hold I on. didn't say you could have them though. I did. Oh know. man, this is nice around my neck though. And she yeah, ooh, she drugged up with it. I did. I did take him because she broke my chain, gang. This the first time I ain't never paid for no red jewelry. Oh, gang. Okay. I would have got me a little chain. She break that. So we get to her career. Her nigga with ex nigga. His up. This me. Bless me. I, when I came out the when I opened the when I opened the room, don't know. Do to get that fly in the bathroom? Well, try to chase after her. Well, I don't know. I step like step it right there. She get the bathroom locked and stuff. I go in the room, I get a little jam, he just laying there, he laying in the door to bed, he like, <laughs> lay, I'm like behind his head, I'm like, he ain't gonna lie, he laying there. I ain't getting that what? what is he just in that bitch, he like, <laughs> he in that bitch, he lay back, on bro, box on, he just, I ain't gonna lie, I'm like, I'm like, Jose, he got the cheek lock under the pillow, but in my head, I'm like, they come and ask me. They like 70. Oh, yellow now? Yeah. Okay. They like 70. I thought they yellow boy and them big boys. Like, right. I don't know. Yeah, right I back really. then, eight years ago, they was all skinny and little. Yellow big niggas still. He's tall. He's good. There was big niggas, yeah, though. They, yellow, big. flock, JoJo. A lot of them, them niggas was big as here. Not, not Joseph Coleman, but. You know what JoJo? Yeah, the tall, skinny, long. Man, them niggas big boys, gang. All his ass. <laughs> oh, big boy. They all six one or better. Mm -hmm. Big, they come at six, these big boy. Why, boy, what the? Hold on. I got scraps. But no. They uh, got scraps. Lil' Jay was big, too. He but is. you you was low-key big, too. But you was, like, small, like, ratchet big. Like, you, even though you was body size small, but my not to play with you like so he got out the uh he got out the bed yeah. i got out the bathroom yeah. and then they was uh, in the hallway yeah. and that's when Tunchi was uh look yellow was like um give me my chain give me my chain then uh Tunchi like no boy on jaja no boy on jaja you ain't getting these chain i'm like yeah, sure. he little jack can you tell her to give me my chain you oh know? my dear sister so that's how it happened though <laughs> Give Lil J like, boy, give him a chain. So, Tucci like, took like, it was like four chains. He took like two and gave, gave him two chains. He kept two back. Like, he gave him, he, he had four, he gave him two. So he kept two. Right. It's like he gave Shindler. I pulled all around Shindler's neck. I'm broke. Yeah, I think the other one of his way. Mm. So it was four chains that belonged to Ken Yellow. Yeah. And he only left with two of them. Yeah. I might like, your side bitch. You my side bitch too. If I don't skis, you play with my home, I'm putting that belt to your ass. I'll put more than that belt to your ass. I'll put that switch to your ass. You know that switch, grandma make you get out the back of the tree? Yeah, that's how that make me feel. After stealing King Yella's chain in the morning, things got even crazier for FBI Butta, Lil J, and his drugged out gang of wannabe rappers. To make sense of all the craziness, let's go through all of the players that took part in the action. The afternoon of May 4th, 2015. There were six adults, and Lil J's three-year-old daughter, in a car that traveled to one of Chicago's south suburbs called, Calumet City. According to the statement given by, FBI Butta, struggle rapper, Dorothy Young, aka, Queen D, was the driver. Next to her, in the front passenger seat, was the clout lord, Jeff McGraw, with his three-year-old daughter in his lap. Italian Beef and Pepsi, also known as, Cooperator 3, government name, Rakeem Wilton was sitting behind the driver in the rear seat. Sitting next to him, in the rear middle seat was Dorothy Young's niece, Roshinda Young. FBI Butta, already mentioned that he placed one of King Yella's chains, around her neck, after he stole it. Remember Shenda's name, it will become very important later in this story. Shenda's best friend, Monique Calhoun, or Nee Nee, was sitting on, 
Butta's Lap. Struggle rapper, Lil Trub's government name was, Philmon Rezine, but, he often used the alias, Ephraim Hale. Blood, was a member of Seattle's, Tuck Town Kings, and this, is the name used in court documents regarding the shooting of one of his relatives, Samuel Rezine. Mr. Philmon Rezine, also called Ephraim Hale, accused him of committing the September 17, 2013 shooting, and, Ephraim Hale, responded by insisting that, Mr. Samuel Rezine, pay the Tuck Town Kings, the money he owed them. In the interview, Mr. Samuel Rezine, also told officers for the first time, about a personal vendetta that, Ephraim Hale, had against him. The vendetta arose from, Ephraim Hale's accusation that, Mr. Rezine, had an affair with the mother of Ephraim Hale's child. Ephraim Hale, had called, Mr. Rezine, from prison, and told him to stay away from the mother of Ephraim Hale's child. Mr. Rezine, believes that, Ephraim Hale, used Mr. Rezine's theft of, $1,500, to incite, and pressure other Tuck Town King members, to avenge the personal issues he had with, Mr. Samuel Rezine. According to, FBI Butta, Philmon Rezine, would lose his life, when, he once again started beefing with a nigga over a female. The night of May 4, 2015, Italian Beef and Pepsi, talked to investigators. According to their report, Wilton says, while they are at City Foods, aka, Smiley's, Wilton sees a male black subject, later identified as, Jerome Burt. Rezine, and Burt, are feuding over a woman. We'll let, FBI Butta, tell us his side of the story. We'll then hear from, Jerome Burt, aka, J. De Kid, or, Mook, to hear what he has to say about everything. Then, we'll return to show everyone exactly how, Italian Beef and Pepsi, implicated himself, and his co-defendants, for conspiracy to commit, murder, during his interrogation. Let's shit out real quick, October. It was seven of us on a, it was seven of us on the case. You know, me, Lil J, Blood did, you got Dwight, you got, Shinda, you got her best friend Nene, you got Brittany, then you got Lil J cousin Shay Shay, then it's me and Lil J. Now, they say I told on him. How can I tell him he ain't do nothing? What did he do? He ain't shoot no gun, I ain't shoot no gun. So it's impossible to tell on the motherfucker. And then he, he dropped fake paperwork. That shit not even, that's no fact. Oh bro, what the facts have cause what I did, I, I dropped the fact, I dropped his affidavit for shit he signed for me. See what had happened was with that situation. I, I we had crossed the hall from each other, I shoot him a kite. I'm like, look, in order for me to get my time, to get my 8 at 50, I need, I need an affidavit from you. And he like, shit, he, I got you, man. And it's so real nigga shot, I'm mad. Anything you need me to, to you need me to sign something, change my statement or something, let me know. Oh, bro, but. Through the door, I never said nothing that could incriminate him or me besides my real name. And what happened? Our friend got shot. I'll tell them. That's what, because we was charged with felony, we were charged with felony murder. And it makes up a felony and murder occurred. So they charged us with our homie body because Moot, he made a dire declaration. His dire declaration was that motherfuckers ran up on him and tried to rob him. First and foremost, we ain't robbing nobody. And why the fuck would we be robbing Moot? What did he have that we didn't have on Tuba Gray? Sure, he ain't had no money. Then nobody know who he was until he got clapped by us. You see what I'm saying? And then he didn't even really get clapped by us. He got clapped by motherfuckers from out of town on Tuba Gray. You see what I'm saying? And he, oh yeah, well, our motherfucker ran up on me. I clapped, clapped, nah. Shorty, little ass, fresh off the plane, off perks on Tuba Gray, ran up on you. Yeah, granted, he died, but you got fucked up too. Anyway. Okay, this one. Okay, this one thing too. I so this one fucked me up because I, I mean, and I'm agreeing with Butter. With I'm, I'm agreeing with Butter on one fucking thing because they never did get out the combo. So who is telling on who? What they tell it? What is they telling on? You, you see what I'm saying? Because they never get out the combo for real, bro. You know what I'm saying? Even though they always would do that, whatever. I only forgot the combo with the hoes. You see what I'm saying? Game both of them never got the combo. So I agree with Butter on that. Like bitch, my we ain't do shit. They did do. They gave blood the gun dummy. They gave him the gun. That's what they did. And, it was enough to get Italian Beef and Pepsi, and Lil J, locked up in jail for conspiracy to commit murder. FBI Butta, started talking to the police, immediately, after his arrest on May 4, 2015. Wilton says, Blood, asks, Jeff McGraw, how many burners they had in the car. Wilton says that, Jeff McGraw, told Blood, they had three, and Blood, asked for one, and, Jeff McGraw, 
gave one to him. Wilton says that, blood, exited the vehicle, while it was still moving, and fell to the ground. Wilton then said that, blood, ran towards, Bert, who was in a walkway between two houses, and Bert and blood, began shooting at each other. With this, FBI butta, implicated, Lil J, in the crime because he gave, blood, the gun used to shoot, Mook. And remember, this statement was made on May 4th, and blood, didn't die until May 5th. So, FBI butta, planned on pointing the finger at his so-called homie, blood, for the attempt on Mook's life, dead, or alive. I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't, but you know, you know, you know how shit be, you know what I'm saying, I, I know, I know, look at it, you know what I'm saying? Well, I knew, you know, I knew he was, you know, he came on the block, one of the guys, he actually got out of jail, his name Uncle Molly and shit like that, you know what I'm saying, he on YouTube, you know, fuck with the niggas or whatever. Man, shooting him at the beach or something on 6 or some shit like that, you know? And, uh, he brought them to the block, you know what I'm saying? So they was cool, you know, that's when they first was breaking with their music, you know what I'm saying, this shit like that, whatever. They was cool, you know, we, we went into them. The BDGD was, you know what I'm saying? Shit, I'm, I'm one of the guys, you know what I'm saying? I got BDs on the block, we got all types of shit on the block, you know, we want love. So him bringing them over there was all good because, you know, they weren't disrespecting nobody was straight, you know what I'm saying? So everything was really kind of good. And they had big folks really shit covering their ass, you know what I'm saying? So everything was good over there. So, long no story short, you know, I know the niggas already. So I hit up, you know, I split up in the store, I flip up in that bitch, trying to sell a phone or some shit like that or something. It was on some motherfucking broke shit, you know what I'm saying? Ain't nobody really had no money in the motherfucking way, but. You know what I'm saying? Uh, they're gonna be trying to sell the phone or something. So, you know, I, 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 I approach them. I'm like, uh, you know, there's a little street shit going on. You know what I'm saying? We ain't getting to all that. You know what I'm saying? But I approach my brother, you know, to holler and shit. Like, you know, man, folks, you know, we were fucking with y'all, bro. You know, so what y'all going hang with? You know, so and so. You know what I'm saying? And uh, he's like, nah, bro, you know, I don't fuck with dude. You know, so and so. We had been trying to did this every third time. I little shit. So, you know, he treated his case to me. You know what I'm saying? It was, it was like, it was three in the ass. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, I was like, I bet, you know what I'm saying? I left it alone. He gave, he gave me a hook and everything. Bro, she's like, man, look, I fuck with you, my body real, you know? I don't know all shit, you know what I'm saying? So I ended up leaving it alone, so. So, Mook may have let things go after his confrontation at the store with FBI Butta, Blood, and Lil J, but the crew of struggle rappers had other ideas. The information FBI Butta gave to authorities on May 4th was so good, they went to interrogate him again on May 6th, when he provided even more useful information. After their confrontation with Mook, at the store, the crew of drugged out dummies drove to Brittany Dupree's house. At 104 Luella, Dupree approached the Nissan and presented a Glock 17 and 45 caliber handgun. Rezine told Dupree the 45 caliber was empty and told her to give him the Glock 17. Dupree then handed the Glock 17 to McGraw and McGraw then handed the Glock 17 to Rezine. For those paying attention, FBI Butta has now implicated Brittany Dupree, in the conspiracy. So, Butta, can cut all of the bullshit talk about him not snitching on anybody. McGraw, then instructed, Dorothy Young, to return to City Foods. Now, Queen D, is implicated as the getaway driver. Once in the City Foods parking lot, McGraw purchased five, Xanax pills, from an unknown subject. McGraw, gave Roshan to Young, one of the pills, and told, Roshan to Young, to go into, City Foods, to look for, Bert. Roshan de Young, returned to the vehicle, after going into the store, and reported to McGraw that she did not see, Bert, in the store. McGraw, then told, Dorothy Young, to enter the parking lot onto Luella, and then turn right onto, Downs. Once on Downs, Wilton called out in the vehicle, he observed, Bert, crossing down the north side of Down. McGraw, tells Rezine, to give the gun to, Wilton, and Rezine refuses saying, this was his action. He exited the Nissan, slipped, <laughs> fell, dropped the Glock 17, <laughs> picked up the gun, and followed Bird into the gangway, next to, 1658 Downs. Wilton said the Nissan, was east of the gangway, and he heard a lot of shots. Uh, okay, so we down on the ground and shit, you know, uh, I fucked up on the gangway line. I do all of it down. Fuck it, I'll break through. It was going, it was over. It was take out time. I got to go, you feel this, my time. This, this, this bag in right here. Well, at least I see my fucking lips. That's how it feels, you know what I'm saying? Man, I'm down on the ground, folks. I see some whole fucking bag. Bad with some kids in the back playing. You feel what I'm saying? Bro, this always shit that they're not going to say. You know what I'm saying? Some kids in the back playing. I don't even know who's going to fuck about my kids in my tickets. I'm trying to get away from the situation. You feel what I'm saying? But I knew I see some little girls in the back. I seen shorty the walk up short like the hell call the police. Dude can say nothing because he fucked up. He can't, he can't say nothing, you know what I'm saying? Okay, so I'm fucking, uh, while they come with my police, 
reinforcements. One of the one of the bitches had a bag full of bricks and hit it. I'm saying you can see one of the bitches get rid of get rid of me. I'm gonna pay. Nigga the bag, bitch, I'm talking about. When that bitch went up, I, I tried to toss my girl, I was like, I ain't that bitch on the scene, I tried to toss my shit, you know. She ain't gonna wanna pick my shit up, gang. This how I got this how I didn't get no case, that's what I'm saying. So all this shit about a statement, I told or this kind of third bitch, I'm a victim. You see what I'm saying? I don't I don't have to say nothing but y'all got witnesses, nigga. It's witnesses out there. What the fuck am I gonna say? Have I been to court? What a paperwork game, whatever y'all think, what the fuck y'all don't even have. And the hoes, I mean pull up the mother, they try to pick him up first. Mm-hmm. Now bring him bring him back to the cop, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, they never got to do it. He's too heavy. These are two bitches who come out. Why did why did y'all be down down the cop? Mm. 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 Y'all, y'all did something for y'all, you know, so leave that shit alone because, you know, this shit get back. Well, fuck all that. She grabbed my plate, bro. I'm on the ground now. If these hoes were ready on some business, she should have knew to have my gun already ready. She would kill me anyway to get me. You know what I'm saying? So I'm on. You feel like get rid of me, you know what I'm saying? She went and kicked my gun out. My shit is a key card, bro. I shot every bullet out my shit. You hear me? Mm-hmm. Every last one of them bitches fucked out my shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, you did. Because I, I, I act why well, I ain't with you today, man. Fuck all that. She went and picked my shit up with that. Put that bitch on my head, bro. Yeah. Roshan De Young received the longest sentence of the drugged out gang of struggle rappers and misfits that conspired to kill Mook. After her arrest in May 2015, she took a 12 year deal at 85%. That means she should be coming home soon. But I got the best deal because he was the first one to talk. He took 8 years at 50%. So, Lil J had a couple of his transmission workers beat him up. Since, he is the president of the Union of Transmission Workers. They had two. Strike. Sergeant Clemick in Division 9, on 13th of May 2016, in your state name and ID. Rocky, you involved in an incident today at 3 South in Division 9. Would you like to make a statement? Yes, sir. Go ahead. I was, I was, um, somebody dropped my name with Halal Light Bear. I did not sign up Halal Light Bear, man. Um, they tried to get, they tried to force me to, um, to write out today. It was in, um, when well, we came, I, I didn't, I didn't write it. And, um, we came back, we came back from Halal Light Bear. Um, we came out with some and then three guys ran up on me and they, and they jumped on me in the hallway. Even though, Lil J started beefing with Italian Beef and Pepsi in jail, where they accused each other of snitching, he, eventually agreed to a 12-year plea deal, at 50%. During his time in jail, it was revealed that, Lil J, was leading a double life, and, abusing his transmission workers. Lil J, denied the accusations, but, this network knows of at least one person, who, does not believe him. We'll hear from that person, and one of Lil J's abused transmission workers, but before we do, please, put some pressure on that like button, and subscribe to the Cartoon News Network. Uh, King Bond is on surveillance from I think 2000, it was probably five, six years ago before he became the King Bond we know, playing gay to, to get in PC. That nigga ain't gay. He a dangerous little motherfucker. You saw what he did, Sean. Mm-hmm. The little motherfucker fin- went up there. the system. He went up there and beat up somebody, man. Slipped out the handcuff, got up there with the other PC people who were in the transfer area. Yeah, yeah, that's all that was. He ain't gay. Yeah, they tried to make me suck they dick too. He playing, little kid motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he just trying to go hurt somebody. Now, Lil' Jay, when you see that. He gay. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah, he, yeah, he, yeah, he, yeah, he, he pushing that ham down that boy back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he, yeah, 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 he ramming shit of the like a motherfucker. He, the, yeah, he ramming shit of the end. Everybody know that's his forehead. They put it in HD. The boy got a sickness in forehead. A unique shape four motherfucking head. Everybody know. And they got it with two different boys, it looked like. The one boy said, the one boy said, hey, well, what's going on back there? He said, nothing. And then they kept pressing. He said, well, he grabbed me by my neck. I'm tired of this shit. I'm sick. He always do that. Put your head up. Look, up. Yeah, look towards me. Yeah, just look up. Stay there. Yeah. 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 Ye
very much. Y'all was doing something. What happened? He had me because I ain't come see what the fuck he want. He gonna step that trophy. That shit irritated me.